All right, here we go. Deep breath. <laughs> um, I just want to start by saying that I'm really excited to be here. The talks earlier were incredible. I loved hearing from all those Black mothers and their experiences were so enlightening. It was just really incredible to hear the work that y'all are doing and how unbelievably, impressively productive y'all are. That was, I wish I could tap into that. I'm so envious. That's incredible, incredible talent that y'all have. Um, so again, my name is Lincoln. I'm a service designer. I'm usually living in Austin, Texas right now. I'm in my parents' basement in Portland, Oregon for the holidays. Um, work I've done has been around homelessness and uh, housing in the public sector, uh, working for the city of Austin, trying to understand what the gaps between homelessness and housing can be um, and how, how can we fill those. And a lot of my work has been working with people experiencing homelessness and trying to bring their ideas to the forefront. And that's really helped me learn a lot about organizing, a lot about uh, how to make things happen and how to bring the voices of people that aren't heard into official processes so that they can be heard and the processes can change. Um, I'm So that's more professional. This is That was my start, that was my intro. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go a little bit less professional here. Um, so I don't usually get to combine my personal and my professional life. As a queer person, I often cover in professional situations. Uh, I don't really reveal full pieces of myself. So I'm gonna start off by revealing something about myself many people don't know. Um, this is me. I was performing in my friend's fashion show. Um, I I really, this is probably the most authentic picture I could ever show anyone <laughs> of myself. Um, I use pro pronouns uh, he and they, and my personal life is very queer. And sometimes I don't feel like I can I can effectively bring that into the workplace. So this is this presentation is less about my work, more about um, how it's more of a rant, all right, about how much I don't love LinkedIn. So here we go. Here we go on it. Um, my, uh, let me start a timer here. Sorry about that, y'all. This is a book that has really helped me place myself in, uh, in as a white person in power structures. Um, this is an, a, an assembly of essays, uh, really great. It, it starts off by talking about uh, the, um, talks out, starts out by talking about looting and, and how that's a political action. Um, here we go, next slide. And really that helps me understand the balance between ally versus accomplice and how I see myself. And I'm often switching between both of these modes. Um, so I'm gonna start off by something that's a little silly here. First, I'm gonna talk about Survivor, 13th season. Jeff Probst is sitting there on the boat and he's talking about all these beautiful people around him and how they need to gather things on the boat before they split into their tribes. And as you can see, this group is pretty diverse, but they decide to split the tribes by race and ethnicity. I couldn't believe this was happening in 2006, and it was just an absurd blind spot of a white organization, right? So how did this happen? These people didn't know that they were going to be split by race. They were just tokenized and thrown in and split by race. And this happens when we have people like Jeff Probst in charge, right? Groups of white people make ignorant white decisions, whether they're trying to act actively anti-racist or not. It's just idiotic, right? It's, it's so frustrating, so sad. <laughs> so now I'm going to bring this back to LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I believe, is a huge contributor to upholding white supremacy. I'll get into that a little bit more. But first, I'm going to talk about a little experience I had on LinkedIn that I would love some help on. So this is Anna Harmon. I was looking at this on my on my feed, and I see this. Real studs vote. I'm looking at this. I'm like, what the hell? Real studs? What do you mean, real studs? Those aren't real studs. What are you talking about, real studs? These are real studs. Excuse me, right? Like, what? <laughs> studs is a wonderful intersectional identity that does not represent super femme, femme people. And I just thought about this blind spot. You know, there's even con cont contention in the queer community. White lesbians, you are not studs. It's a big thing. And for this company to say real studs vote is really poking at a very disenfranchised group um, within the trans in intersectional identities. So like, how the hell did that happen, right? I'll show you how it happened. Let's start by talking about studs. So this is studs. This is their kiosk location. They love the, wor the, the word play here. Hey, stud, they, they love it. So this is how they got into their, um, their identity. This is what it looks like. And here they have their ambassadors right here. Beautiful people. Oh my goodness, look at Jared with the pink hair. Hi, Jared. How's it going, Jared with the pink hair? <laughs> um, but what the heck, you know, like, <laughs> Those, th there's something wrong. How did they end up with that identity? And it's because here we have the founders 
look at them standing in front of this homo ignorant sign. Whole new you, are you kidding me? Like this is what happens when a white organization is making decisions and tokenizing people of color in order to push their brand. It is completely fucked up. So I decided I needed to do something. And so I tried to do something that didn't go very far. So first I started with a question, do you know the history of the term stub within queer female body communities? Nothing. Then I asked again, okay, Anna Harmon, I guess not. I would be happy to have a talk with you to help you better validate this community. Crickets, nothing, nothing, only crickets. So frustrating. So I'm, you know, I'm stuck here. And this really helped me see how LinkedIn sits within social media. LinkedIn is protected from call out culture because people are sitting there. Why? Why, why are they doing that? Because I'm sitting here protecting my salary. I'm sitting here protecting my, my professional identity. And if I'm sitting here doing that, then any person of color in that situation is sitting there doing it 10 times over. And so LinkedIn is completely protected. And I think it's white people's job to really, really tear this down. All right. And so I started a group. It's called Acid Wash LinkedIn. This is the thing. It's a private group. It won't show that you're on it. You can search it with that code. I'll have it in the final thing as well. Um, and this is a, a place. I don't know what it's going to be. You know, let's get on there and talk. And, and I would love to be, you know, in that situation, I could have used more people jumping on that jumping on that post, right? So that they, we could have we could have brought this to her attention so she could fix it. Um, I'm sorry, y'all, about this 15 second thing. <laughs> I'm just totally off track. Um, so now my my question that I have is ally or accomplice, and what in that situation was I an ally or was an was I an accomplice? I think I was acting more as an ally when I was commenting on that person's post. But I think this group is kind of a step toward accomplice. I think it's really important to to end this, to end the white supremacy that that LinkedIn is is pushing. And I think it's up to white people to to carve out that space so that more voices can be heard. So I'm hoping that group can be used to to you know share ideas. To I, I'm happy to jump on and start calling people out. I want to do it. I don't have enough things. I'm not finding them fast enough. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. I think that the difference between an ally and accomplice is that an ally builds relationships for a cause. An ally is working to, to dismantle white supremacy, but an accomplice builds relationships as a cause. And I think that this is the biggest issue within tokenizing particularly, is that white people are not building people of color and queer people into their life to include them. They're not building them from the beginning. We're adding them in later. And I think it's really important to develop relationships to build things with people by within four, right? Um, anyway, that's the end of that. <laughs> um, this is my LinkedIn. I have my email there and I have my Twitter as well. I also have the the, the, the um, link to the group there. So thanks y'all for, for listening to my rant. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>